Booker Tove, everyone. It is Tuesday, May 5th. Uh, calling here from Raleigh, North Carolina. Rabbi Eric Solomon, good to see you again. Talking about Parshat Emor once again. And in this Torah portion, one of the mitzvot of uh, really of tzedakah, our early sense of what it means to give away to the needy, is called peya, the corners of your field. So in ancient Israel, when you had your field, agriculturally, if you were blessed to own a field, you did not go all the way to the corners of your fields, you let them be. And the idea behind that was that um, when you were done, I guess the end of the day or end of your time, you left that in the, in the corners for the poor and the needy to come on their own time to gather that. So the idea being that the, the land is not totally yours to cultivate and to get for food, but to leave for those that are in need in the corners. And there's a number of powerful things about that. First of all, you know, it gives a sense of dignity and anonymity. Presum we presume that you would be not watching as people came by, but you leave it for other people. And that also emphasizes the fact that the land is not fully yours, since it's God's, and you're just kind of taking your piece and leaving the rest for, for community. You're honoring the dignity of those people who are taking it by, by not being around them and honoring this is their section, in a way. Um, but I want to talk about it, just a, another like angle on it through a TED Talk I heard a couple years ago. Unfortunately, I forgot the, uh, the author's name. But as an author wrote a book about happiness and kind of the search for happiness and what makes us happy, which, you know, is a, is a big subject in the contemporary literature, pop literature, you know, New York Times bestsellers. What makes us happy? Why is it Americans in particular with, separate from the COVID circumstance, um, I have some of the most materially, economically, we are the wealthiest country in the world. We have, you know, greater opportunities, you know, again, putting COVID to the side for a second. So there's the internet, luxuries, food, you know, so many places around the world have so many more struggles with those basic essentials in life. And yet other countries rate happier on a happiness index, which actually United Nations puts out an actual index of happiness. And why is it other countries uh, rate happier than us, uh, given our relative safety, security, et cetera, et cetera. So one of the stories that that was shared that I, I thought was so powerful and, and an example is that a, a researcher had like a hundred dollars, took hundred dollars and went to certain citizens, random citizens across the world and said, here's hundred dollars. Went to citizens of Russia, Tokyo, I think it was Japan, a few countries like this said, here's a hundred dollars and Americans, we're giving it to you. We want you to be happy. Take this money and do something with it that will make you happy. So in all the other countries of the world, Russia, Japan, Taiwan, they took the money and they bought something for someone else. The majority of the Americans took the money and bought something for themselves. Now, there is nothing wrong with buying something for yourself. And they call it retail therapy. <laughs> I like shopping on Amazon too, you know. Okay, I, it's not that I don't like my things. I get it. Look, we, but we, our culture has told us that you want to be happy, have more things. You want to be happy, have more money. More money will make you happy. And what we discovered is it's not true. In fact, when I was, getting, I was discussing this in a sermon a couple of years ago, you know, um, the American cultural, kind of the media milieu, the business milieu, the you know, marketing milieu. It's basically, if you just have this one item, if I'm just 10 pounds lighter, if I'm just, you know, have this particular type of car, if I have this type of living house, apartment, it'll just, I'll be happy, I'll be happy. And you know, all this research says that even the most valuable item, like a great, or a thing that you love so much, like a great car, you are happy, you're happier. Study show, for two weeks, for two weeks you're happier, then you get bored with it. You know, that's the hedonic thing, and you gotta go back, it's, it, it gets old. Most things, most things don't hold on and don't give you an everlasting happiness. What gives you everlasting happiness? Is giving things away. And even more than I'd say is giving yourself away. You know, one of the questions asked of converts, according to the Talmud, it says, when someone comes to convert and comes to thousands of years ago, they say, don't you realize that before you were Jewish, you did not have to follow certain mitzvot, which are going to be challenging, you know, eating pork, keeping Shabbat. 
One of them listed, you know, beforehand, you didn't have to do these things and it was fine. I mean, you could do them actually, but once you join our people, you're responsible for them. They have to be your practice. In fact, it says there's a consequence if you don't. One of those listed is Paya, is the corners of your fields, the forgotten sheaves. Why? Why does it say these things? It's basically saying, you know, being a Jew, it's going to be tough. You're going to be required to give away some of your things, and that's going to have material effect on your livelihood. And, you know, you're not going to keep it all. But what's the secret behind that? Is that by giving it away, you're actually going to be happier. And happiness, I'm not talking about fleeting happiness. Like, you know, I'm happy when I have something delicious or a piece of food <laughs> because believe me food does make you happy i mean i like food believe me like my sweets but the problem is you're gonna be hungry again a couple hours later right so i'm talking about deep soulful sustaining simcha that comes from the heart is when you give yourself away to things that matter you know, I, I happened to watch an interview last night with some doctors who are serving under COVID-19 in, in a unit in Boston. A friend of mine was doing an interview. And they are suffering as doctors. They're describing under the PPE, the, the isolation of it. it. They call it moon suits. Just the experience, watching people die, young people die, doing end of life conversations. This is extremely difficult. I, I wouldn't say they're happy. That wouldn't be the right term. But they filled with meaning right now? Absolutely. And they're getting that meaning by giving themselves away to service. COVID-19 right now, you know who's, this is my take, anecdotal. Getting through it, happy is right word, meaningfully, people are finding something that they can give away. That includes money if you can do so, by the way, tzedakah. The corner of your fields. But it's also giving away the corner of your heart. Not because you're giving it away and you're losing it. It's because of what you're gaining by serving someone else. Service. It sounds like it's going to take your time. It's going to be a burden. And it can be. Look, the people that are over do it. It's a balance. But giving the corners your fields in this poor portion is such a mitzvah, not just for others, it's actually for the giver because it makes your life meaningful. Those essential workers right now, they are suffering. They are risking their lives. They're also filled with meaning. And that is soul sustaining, soul sustaining in a way that others I want to encourage. You want to do something to make yourself happy? Don't hold on to everything. See what you can do in safe ways to give yourself away. That's the Torah's message of why we give the corners away as well. Bokertov, morning Torah. Stay safe and healthy. Shut up.